So module 1D. In this module, we're going to start looking at dimensional analysis and unit conversions. So hopefully this is a little bit of a review for you guys, but if it's not, that's okay. We're going to start at the basis. We're going to do some simple calculations here and then some more difficult ones in class so that we can get some better practice with it. You should be able to convert, um, do dimensional analysis, and we're going to do it in a specific way. I want you to follow that pattern, okay? Even if you learned it a different way, I want you to follow the pattern we're going to cover in class. You need to know these conversions. These are not an exhaustive list. You will see others as well in the notes or throughout the semester, but these are just to kind of get you started in some conversions you're going to need to know. And absolutely know the formula for density. If you do not already, go ahead and memorize it now. Density is equal to mass over volume, and that is an important conversion to know. We use density a lot throughout Gen Chem. So before we get started, I want to talk briefly about intensive and extensive properties. An intensive property is independent of the amount of substance present. Example, I have, a hun I have two cups. In one cup, or bowls. In one bowl, I have 100 grams of gold. In the other bowl, I have 1,000 grams of gold. They have the same density. They have the same molar mass. If they are in the same room, they have the same temperature. It is independent upon how much is actually there. An extensive property, on the other hand, is dependent upon the amount of substance present. 100 grams of gold weighs a lot less than 1,000 grams of gold, 10 times less to be exact. The volume of 100 grams of gold will be less than the volume of 1,000 grams of gold. How much less? Eh, depends on the volume of gold atom, right? The number of moles. We'll talk about moles a lot more in, chem in chapter 2, so if you don't know what a mole is yet, that's okay, it's coming. But a, num a mole is a number word. It tells me how many of something are present. Like, if we say a dozen eggs, we know 12 means a dozen, right? A mole tells me a very specific number. So the number of moles is telling me how many atoms of gold are present in 100 grams versus how many atoms of gold are present in 1,000 grams. It's going to be a different amount. Heat, we're going to talk about more in Chapter 7, thermochemistry, um, but how much heat can be released if I react to those, it would be different for 100 grams versus 1,000 grams. Heat and temperature are not the same thing. So dimensional analysis, solving word problems by focusing on your units. You're going to follow this pattern, okay? And again, I want you to follow this pattern. You need to write down what you want to know. You're going to start with the given quantity. So write down first what you want to know. We're going to do two quick examples at the end of this module, and then we'll work a lot more in class. But first thing you want to do, write down what you want to know. What are you trying to find? You're trying to find the mass, trying to find the volume, trying to find the number of something. What are you trying to find? Then you're going to write down the given measured quantity. There has to be some kind of measurement provided in the question, or you can't do the question, right? You can't just be told, well, go find this. Go find what? You need to know what you're looking for, and you need to start with the value. Apply conversion factors to cancel unwanted units, and double check your, to make sure your answer makes sense. And did you remember your units? I cannot highlight this enough. Did you remember units? Again, we've talked about this before in one of the other modules, but units are vital. If I tell you I'm giving you 20, am I giving you $20 or 20 homework assignments? I know you much prefer the $20, or at least I would. Conversion factors themselves are just an equality. You need to know these conversion factors, and again, this is not an exhaustive list. But one inch is 2.54 centimeters. It says exact here. That's because that is an exact conversion. That means that 1.00 repeating forever inches is 2.54 zero repeating forever centimeters. There's no limit to sig figs. One mil is one centimeter cubed equals one cc. If I had a cube, pretend that's actually a cube drawn correctly, even with the little app or even with the iPad, I can't draw cube correctly. But let's say these were all equal sides, one centimeter, one centimeter, one centimeter. The volume here would be one milliliter. One milliliter is equal to one centimeter cubed or one cc. Cc stands for cubic centimeter. That's really hard to read. You're gonna see that a lot in the medical field. Written, things written as a cc, it just means a cubic centimeter. Uh, 12 inches and one foot. Most people know that one pretty comfortably, but if you don't, you need to get, make sure you know that one. Three feet to one yard. That one's a little less common for people to know, but um, the empirical system. 2.205 pounds equals one kilogram. That is four sig figs, okay? 
that should really be written as 1.00 kilogram, but it's implied in the way it's written. 454 grams to one pound is three sig figs. They'll, these will limit your calculations if your measurement has a bigger number on it. I don't care which one of those you know, but you need to know one of them. You have to be able to convert mass volume um, length between the metric system and the empirical system, you, or the American system. You have to be able to convert between them. So either 2.205 pounds to one kilogram or 454 grams to one, um, one pound. I'll be honest, up until about two years ago, I always used the 2.205. Now I use the 454. I don't care which one you use. It does not matter to me as long as you can do your calculations. One liter is 1.057 quarts. So again, conversion factors themselves are just equalities. It's in a ratio that's equal to one that can be used to relate two different units or, exp and, um, or express expression as an equality. Let's say I take, you know, nine and I multiply it by one. Still nine. That's all I'm doing here. I'm just doing it through units. Now the number will change. But that's because I'm doing it through units to get to a different unit. So if I have 100 centimeters, that's equal to one meter, right? I know it takes 100 centimeters to equal one meter or one centimeter, 0 0.01 meters. I'm writing it here as a ratio, 100 centimeters to one meter, one meter to 100 centimeters. I tend to use the bigger numbers because they just make more sense to my brain. You can do it by fraction I don't, or by decimal place. I don't care. Um, this would also be 10 to the 2 centimeters, 1 meter, 1 centimeter, 10 to the minus 2 meters. I don't care which way you write it. It doesn't bother me at all. As long as you're keeping the right number to the right unit. That's the hard part for students. Let's say I say 65 miles per hour. I'm driving down the freeway and I'm going 65 miles per hour. That means that within one hour, I should travel 65 miles. That is equal to one. 65 miles per one hour. That is an equality. They're equal to each other. Let's say I'm looking at picometer. I know this is where students get really messed up, and I think it's a lot has to do with... Um, module A, B, I don't remember, whenever, I think it's module A when we talk about the metric um, system. And I think that the book is confused, um, confuses students in that sense, not, on, not intentionally. And I didn't write your book, so I can't fix that. But I think students get really messed up with the way the tables look. I need you to think about the fact that which number is smaller. A picometer is very small compared to a meter. So I need a lot of picometers to make it up to one meter. Or I need very few meters to equal to one picometer. So one picometer, 10 to the minus 12 meters. 10 to the 12 picometers, one meter. This negative is what's going to throw students off. In the book, you're going to see the negative associated with the picometer. What that's telling you is it takes 10 to the negative 12 meters to get to one picometer. It takes very, a very small amount of one meter to equal to one picometer because one picometer is very small. I tend to use the more positive numbers. You can do whatever one you're more comfortable with. I don't care. I can follow both. I just will tend to teach one way. But it takes a lot of picometers to equal one meter. The mistake students are going to make is this. They're going to say one meter is 10 to the negative 12 picometers. That is not correct. The negative number needs to go to the bigger measurement. The positive number goes to the smaller measurement. Here's an example. Let's say we're trying to find the number of meters. So now we're down here. Let's say we're trying to find the number of meters if we have 1.76 picometers. This is just one of the ways we can set it up. Again, we could set it up other ways as well. I'll write a couple other ways up here, up here on top in just a second when we finish doing this example. But let's say I'm trying to find the number of meters. I know it's 1.76 picometer. I know 10 to the negative 12 meters equals 1 picometer. So picometers cancel out, numerator, denominator. I'm left with my meter and my numerator, which is what I'm trying to find, and I do my calculation. 1.76 times 10 raised to the negative 12. I'm going to plug that in my calculator. I said you could draw this out other ways as well, though, and you can. You can get the same exact answer. Number of meters 
1.76 picometer. I don't tend to put the one down here. You are welcome to if you would like. I don't tend to write it myself. It's just anything divided by one is still itself. But I could write this as times one meter, 10 to the 12th picometers. I will get the same answer, 1.76 times 10 to the negative 12 meters. To plug this into the calculator, I'm going to write 1.76, or type 1.76 divided by 10 raised to the 12th. So instead of, 10, instead of multiplying it by 10 raised to the negative 12th, I'm dividing it by 10 raised to the 12th. Density, you do have to have this memorized. Density is mass over volume. You should be able to calculate this any which way. And we're going to use this um, throughout our conversion factors throughout the semester. For example, density of ethanol is 0.789 grams per mil. Express this as two conversion factors. First, because you're going to see me do it, I abbreviate ethanol by writing ETOH. It could be uppercase or lowercase. doesn't matter. But you're going to see me do that. If I want to express this as two conversion factors, I could write 0.789 grams of ethanol to one mil of ethanol. Notice I'm writing ethanol after the unit here. That's because by chapter two, we're going to start converting between different species, and I want to be able to know that I'm talking about the right species here. So I'm going to write down what it correlates to to kind of get you guys ready for that and prepared for what's coming. I could also write one mil of ethanol divided by 0.789 grams. These are both the same thing. If I have 0.789 grams of ethanol, I will have exactly one mil of ethanol. They're equal to one. Why do I care to write in both ways? Well, sometimes I'm trying to cancel out mils and get to grams. Sometimes I'm trying to cancel out grams and get to mils. Density is the perfect conversion to be able to go between your mass and your volume. And to finish up this module, let's work two quick examples. These are easy examples. That is intentional, so we can work the more difficult examples in class. But let's get the process down. Step one, write down what you are trying to find. Well, let's read the question. How many feet are in six yards? So I'm trying to find feet, and I'm starting with six yards. Number of feet. Write down what you're given. What measurement are you told? You're told you have six yards. Apply conversion factors to get to your desired units. I have six yards. I want feet. I know that three feet equal one yard. That can be written as three feet to one yard or one yard to three feet. How do I know which one to pick? I'm going to pick the one that gets me to the correct units. I need to cancel out yards. I want to get to feet. So I need to put my yard in the denominator so I can cancel it out because it's the numerator. And again, if you need to put the divided by one here to see it's a numerator, that's fine. I'm not going to normally write that. You need to recognize that it's a numerator. I know from my conversions that three feet equal one yard. That cancels out my yard and gives me feet. Perfect. Now I'm going to plug it in the calculator. 6.0 times 3 gives me 18 feet. There's two sig figs here. This is exact. Three feet is exactly one yard, which means it does not limit my sig figs. Next question, how many yards are there in 6.0 feet? So now I'm trying to find yards. Number of yards... 6.0 feet. I'm trying to cancel feet and get to yard. I know that one yard is three feet. Cancels my feet, gives me my yards. That is 6.0 there. 6.0 divided by three is two, but there's two sig figs here. This is exact. So I need to say 2.0 and yard. Again, these are easier calculations, but in the very next module here in class, we will go ahead and start working some more difficult examples.